In front of you, I have three different jet ski batteries. The first one is lithium ion phosphate, followed by flooded lead acid, and finally AGM or absorbent glass mat. In this video, I'm going to go over the differences between these three batteries and which one I'm choosing to run in my jet ski. From the factory, Kawasaki jet skis include flooded lead acid batteries. This technology has been around for over 150 years and includes submerging lead plates in sulfuric acid. Lead acid batteries are the most economical option, with this battery costing about $120. Out of the three tested, this is the heaviest battery coming in at nearly 15 pounds. This lead acid battery has a very fast self-discharge rate, much more than the lithium or AGM. For a little bit more money than the flooded lead acid, you can get an AGM battery. AGM batteries follow the same principle as lead acid batteries, but have absorbent fiberglass cloth between the electrodes. This AGM battery costs about $145 and weighs in at just over 14 pounds. Due to their construction, AGM batteries are also less likely to become sulfated, meaning these can be charged and discharged more times than a lead acid battery. Finally, we have lithium ion phosphate batteries. This is the newest technology out of all the batteries featured. To manufacture these batteries, each cell is individually made. The individual cells are then combined into battery packs. Next, automated robots produce the BMS, or battery management system. These chips are connected to the batteries and installed within the casing. The BMS ensures that the lithium cells within the battery pack are all operating within safe parameters. Since no lead plates or sulfuric acid is used, these batteries are extremely light. This lithium ion phosphate battery is the most expensive one tested at $289.99. For that price, you get a battery that weighs just five pounds, lasts for nearly five years, and loses only a small amount of its charge, even when stored for long periods of time. When it comes to deciding which jet ski battery you should actually buy, the amount of information out there is extremely overwhelming and often incorrect. So over the last year, I've been conducting an experiment on my jet ski, swapping out lithium, lead acid, and AGM batteries to determine which one performs best. In addition, I measured starting and final voltages after subjecting these batteries to load tests using a carbon pile load tester. First, all three batteries were removed from the jet ski. Then, I used the Snoko Genius 1 charger to charge all three batteries. Using the same charger evens the playing field, and this Snoko Genius is compatible with lead acid, AGM, and lithium batteries. Once the batteries were fully charged, as indicated by a voltage check and by the light turning green on the NOCO charger, I then proceeded to subject each battery to three consecutive 15 second load tests at 150 amps. This test was designed to mimic the load placed on a battery each time the start button on a personal watercraft is pressed. I've summarized the results of all three batteries here. Now keep in mind that these are all Group 20 batteries, and dimensionally, they're all about the same. This is the high-performance lithium ion phosphate battery from Cowie Performance, designed specifically for use in Kawasaki jet skis. Our starting test voltage was 13.6 volts. After three consecutive 150 amp load tests, our voltage fell to 13.2 volts, or a percentage change of 2.9%. When this battery was stored for two weeks, it lost about 1% of its charge. This is a conventional lead acid battery from Yuasa. This is the battery that Kawasaki uses in their skis directly from the factory. Starting at 12.6 volts, the lead acid battery fell to 12.31 volts after three consecutive 150 amp load tests. That's a percentage change of 2.3%. After sitting for two weeks, this battery registered a voltage drop of 7%. Finally, let's take another look at the Super Start PowerSport AGM battery. This AGM had an initial voltage of 12.6 volts. After three consecutive 150 amp load tests, voltage dropped down to 12.25 volts, a percentage change of 2.7%. After letting this battery sit for two weeks, the voltage drop was 4%. All right, so here's my key takeaways. One, the lithium ion phosphate battery was the only battery that could then be subjected to a fourth 150 amp load test and still maintain a voltage of over 13 volts. 
Although the AGM in lead acid experienced less voltage droop before and after the load test than the lithium battery, because the lithium battery's design voltage is so much higher, those lower drops between the AGM and lead acid were more impactful, rendering those two batteries unable to pass a fourth load test like the lithium did. There's another major difference between lead acid AGM and lithium ion phosphate batteries, and that is the way that they discharge. So you can see here that lead acid AGM batteries discharge at a steady pace over time, whereas lithium ion batteries will maintain a relatively high voltage and then the BMS will cut the battery off completely and the voltage will drop to zero. All right, so in this table, I've summarized some of the pros and cons of all three batteries tested. Let's go over each of them. For most consumers, it's gonna come down to budget and the lead acid comes in at the lowest price. Lead acid also gives you OEM reliability. And in my test, the lead acid used had the largest reserve capacity, meaning there was more juice to run stereos and bilge pumps while the engine is off. The big downside of the lead acid battery is that it weighs 15 pounds, the heaviest out of all three tested. These batteries also have a high sulfation rate and a high self discharge rate. You also get the fewest charge cycles out of a lead acid, meaning these batteries don't last as long as comparable options. The AGM option does offer a lower self discharge rate and these batteries typically last twice as long as lead acid comparables. Their sealed non-spillable design is maintenance free. The downside of the AGM is that it's the second most expensive option and the AGM weighs just one pound less than the lead acid battery. Finally, we have the lithium ion phosphate battery. This battery is extremely light at only five pounds and basically does not self-discharge at all, which means it can be stored for weeks and weeks at a time without losing any of its charge. The increased ampacity of this battery means your engine cranks and starts faster than with a lead acid or AGM, and there's minimal voltage droop on high load. This battery is able to maintain a very high voltage for a long period of time. On the downside, these are the most expensive option and have a lower reserve capacity than comparable AGM or lead acid counterparts. Because of the way that lithium ion phosphate batteries discharge, oftentimes no low voltage warning will be triggered and instead the system will just go dark. The benefit of this is that there won't be any stress to sensitive electronics that attempt to run on a voltage that's too low. If you remove an AGM or lithium ion phosphate battery from your jet ski, you will need to use a special charger for them. After much skepticism and even more testing, I finally settled on the lithium ion battery as the daily driver in my Kawasaki Ultra 310 jet ski. I can store the ski for two weeks, three weeks at a time and not have to top the battery off before going out. And at only five pounds, this battery reduces the weight in the front of your ski and gets you just a little bit closer to your speed and performance goals. Always check your battery's health before heading out on the water. And regardless of which battery you run, it never hurts to carry an emergency jump pack. A June 2025 survey on JD's Waterworld revealed that 52% of viewers run a lead acid battery, while 35% run AGM, and only 14% run a lithium battery in their Kawasaki jet skis. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and subscribe for more exclusive jet ski content, only on JD's Waterworld.